So we are deep in a swamp right now, and we've been flipping rocks, logs, all kinds of stuff like that. Now these guys are looking for snakes. I am hoping to get some cool invertebrates. Most hopefully a Helgramite. Uh, we get little ones back home in my yard, but here I'm hoping to find some massive Dobson fly larvae. Evan, what do you think? That would be great. Right now we're on the prowl for snakes, but there's also a special guest up in the trees that we're listening for at the moment. We're exploring a swamp today and I've got help. Harrison and Evan from the Wildlife Brothers and Emilio from Animal Encounters are joining me on a search for different creatures. These guys are looking for snakes, but what I'm hoping to find are some of the strangest invertebrates that lurk in an aquatic ecosystem. We're exploring a hardwood swamp right now, and we've already seen a ton of really cool insects. Beetles, dragonflies. We probably stand a chance at some really cool stuff. Large beetles have been known to hang out in this area. So all we gotta do is keep scanning these logs and these bushes and we'll get something. There's a secret world all around us. Strange creatures living hidden lives, sometimes even in our own backyards. If you've ventured outside, you've probably seen different creatures that are staples of different ecosystems all around us. Sometimes, if you take a closer look, you can find neat little finds that are significantly more interesting than your garden variety creatures. But what truly makes an adventure special is when you find something shiny. Animals that I consider to be wild or even gem encounters lurk all around us. Creatures with really bizarre biology or that are extremely rare to find. What I'm looking for in this swamp is the Helgramite, one of the strangest insects you can possibly find. And due to its sensitive nature, the Helgramite is truly a gem of the aquatic ecosystems. At every stage of their life, they're extremely creepy looking. But because they're so hard to find and so special, if I can get my hands on a Helgramite in this trip, this swamp adventure will be a rousing success. Sometimes when you're exploring the swamp, you have to make a choice. Do you take the easy way, get your shoes wet, and trek right through the water, or do what I'm doing currently, where I'm balancing on rocks trying to keep my shoes dry? It's a little precarious and you have to be sure-footed, but you can make it across even a wide little part of the creek like this if you're careful. I'm just gonna stick to the rocks. They're a little wobbly. There we go. My feet are dry. Let's keep going. The best way to find a Helgramite is flipping rocks in the right kind of habitat. This swamp is relatively undisturbed, so pollution is super low. What I'm hoping is that the oxygen content is high because Helgramites need a very high dissolved oxygen count in order to survive. Helgramites are indicator species, which means if they live there, the environment is super healthy. If I can find a Helgramite under one of these rocks, not only have I completed my goal, but I've proven that this ecosystem is worth further study for even cooler creatures. And sure enough, check out what I found. What I have right here is probably one of the strangest insects you could possibly find, and is also one of the most fearsome. Look at the jaws on this thing. This is a Helgramite, and a proper one at that. This is going to grow up to become one of the fearsome Dobson flies, and they freak a lot of people out every single year. And this might be a nightmarish looking animal, but it turns out they're actually really important. Out here in this swamp, in this, in this little creek system, finding one of these is a huge indicator that this area is full of life. A Helgramite is one of the most sensitive types of insects you can find in an aquatic ecosystem, and they need an incredibly oxygen rich environment to survive. And, oh man, they're menacing. You see right there, he's trying to bite me. And Helgramites, they can bite. Even as adults, the females are known to have a really nasty bite. And this is an aquatic predator. These, these jaws are menacing for a reason. It's gonna be attacking all kinds of little soft-bodied invertebrates in this little swamp ecosystem. But what's crazy is, once it turns into an adult, its diet's gonna change dramatically. And they're gonna actually be feeding on mostly, if they eat at all, nectar and things like that. And that's actually a kind of interesting life strategy here. This insect has what's called a holometabolous lifestyle. They go through complete metamorphosis. And what's interesting about that is a lot of holometabolous insects will actually have very different diets between their larval stage and their adult stage. And that actually is good because in a dog-eat-dog -dog world like the world of insects that you can find in your own backyard, competition can be really high. There are thousands, if not millions of species of insects in the world, which means there's not a whole lot of room for competition for food and resources. If your larvae eat the same thing as your adults, your species is gonna have some difficulty surviving. But having larvae living in the water 
eating other insects than adults flying around above land is a really smart way to cheat the system. How about that beautiful, albeit creepy looking, Helgramite out here in the swamp? This Helgramite might be a great indicator that the local environment is clean, but another amazing animal that can show an environment's health is the salamander. My friends over at the Wildlife Brothers have done an incredible video on extremely rare red salamanders. If you want to see that video, check it out right here. And until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.